Welcome for the after lunch talk. Uh, hopefully, um, yeah, uh, we always say Lupin um, So, but yeah, I, I make it a little bit funny. Hopefully, um, so yeah. Normally, I stick things on fire, but uh, today it's a little bit more electricity. Um, yeah. EV charger stations, uh, security. Um, yeah, could we say security? I'm not sure. Um, we got it's free of charge. Um, that's the main topic, and we start with a small intro demo. Um, hopefully the video starts, as always. This is a switch and it has a spare connection there. So, here we have already the picture of uh, the front panel of the charging station. What I found is a little computer inside. I already found it something interesting, some kind of uh, log file that is called authorization cache. This looks like that we have now uh, IDs that we need uh, for the charging card. I have an valid user ID that I can use now, in a smart card emulator, and uh, it's emulating anyhow NFC cards. So I connect it to my computer, I just put my card in front of it. And I have now to say to the charging station, okay, I want now power. Good. That's the funny side of research. You always have to uh, have something to eat there. So, yeah. Um, as I already mentioned, so um, I'm doing research in ICS environments. Um, Mostly everything what uh, looks like a little bit industrial uh, or something else. So uh, that's my main focus uh, where I do research in. And um, yeah, that's what we see today. So electric mobility. So there is a huge uh, change in how you drive in future. So from back from petrol cars on to electrical cars and uh, the environment for that you have to be in place there. And, um, yeah, what often is uh, overlooked or forgotten about that is then, um, yeah, you have to be also have some security things inside. Um, the market is just exponential growth. Um, so it's a fast evolving market. So, so many vendors coming in place, uh, building charging station, wall boxes, and so on with the equipment. But um, what they implement is always uh, the same old stuff. And uh, the security is often forgotten about and um, yeah sometimes they think uh, oh, we can implement it later but yeah mm. so the main focus um, as you see is um, they try to ensure the, um, the satisfaction of the EV drivers so it must be as easy as refueling your petrol car if you're going to a gas station uh, just refill your car and that's it, um, that they try also to do with um, electrical charging station. But yeah, there are so many things that they can uh, not work correctly. Um, yeah, just a few statistics. Um, so the acceptance is quite high. So the, um, the market is there. So more and more electrical vehicles coming and coming. But also on the other side, um, it's stuck in. Um, because uh, the, in Germany, they stopped the... Uh, uh, how you name it, the sponsoring of electrical vehicles, so um, that, you, that you can see also in the statistics then that it is going down for the January half of last year, so this year it's the same effect again, because they have stopped now uh, the next uh, thing, um, and yeah, there are so many uh, electrical vehicles now on stock, uh, the vendors trying to push out uh, for very low prices now, um, and um, yeah, so, if you want to buy an electrical vehicle currently, it's very cheap for that. Mm. Yeah. As I already mentioned, it must be as easy as uh, refuel your car. Um, but you always uh, have to deal then with uh, how to pay your electricity uh, on the charging station, and uh, therefore you have to, uh, a couple of um, charging possibilities. So currently in Germany we have around uh, 70,000 charging points uh, or charging stations, um, fast charger, uh, slow ones, uh, and so on. And um, it is already around 2.6 gigawatt electrical uh, energy that um, 
could be uh, and um, yeah charged uh, at the same time. So 2.6 gigawatt is already a good amount, but uh, so currently uh, it is a little bit more in that area. So maybe we could use it for other attacks later. Um, yeah, when I look at my home, yeah, I'm living in, inside of the uh, ring, but uh, the next charging station is uh, just outside. It's uh, eight kilometers from my house. It's the next charging station. Uh, even in my area, there's nothing because um, I'm living in the middle of nowhere. Um, I had other, I had other uh, side effects that is very easy. Okay, let's dig a little bit deeper in the uh, charging station infrastructure. So, um, the main protocol that is used for that is the OCPP architecture. So it's the open charging point protocol uh, that is used for that. And um, that is the uh, communication in the back end, uh, how the charging station and the back end uh, provider are working. Um, so the charging station is communicating with an, uh, with the management system in the back end uh, using these protocols. And um, yeah, it's often cloud-based platforms that they are using um, or whatever, and they're communicating sometimes over HTTPS-like things uh, or over web sockets or whatever. So it's very easy uh, implemented. Um, the last sentence you already see: um, there are secure web sockets available. Um, yeah, they are available, but often not used. Mm. We will see maybe a little bit later. Um, yeah, just a small uh, overview. Uh, you have a local user uh, that is uh, interacting with the charging uh, station, and in the back end, uh, the communication is done over the OCPP protocol. Mm. One charging station can have multiple charging points. Um, that is one point that you have. Uh, to remember when uh, when some someone is dealing with uh, the numbers, so they sometimes say we have so many charging points in place that does not mean that it's uh, the same number of charging stations. Because one charging station can have two, three, four charging points. Um, just to um, get an overview about the numbers there. So then you have uh, AC devices or DC devices. So uh, the AC uh, chargers uh, are quite easy, um, so up to 11 kilowatt, um, sometimes a little bit more, uh, depending on how many uh, how many wires you can use uh, or how many power the electricity grid is providing. Um, then in Germany we have always for everything a strange law. Um, in Germany we have the Ladesäulenverordnung uh, for uh, for the um, ad hoc recharging of your cars and. Uh, the minimum requirement of the uh, ladder point for ordnung is that you have uh, a free usage of the cash management that you have to run. So it says you can um, make also anyhow a cash payment, but um, I've never seen a charging station with a cash machine in front of where you can put in some bills and charge your car. So you have always somehow a credit card, debit card, um, or uh, the charging cards itself. Um, so. Yeah, cash ATMs with that I have never seen. Since, um, yeah, this is already um, overtaken now because of the time. Um, so after the July of 23, um, every charging station has to have a credit or debit card uh, payment terminal inside. Before that time, uh, it was optional. You can have this one or this one. Or only the um, car payment or web-based uh, system. So now every new uh, charging point that is coming up has to have a credit or debit card uh, terminal in front of that. So these are most secure, uh, but they also have somehow the um, charging card itself. But we will see. Um, in the back end itself, it's quite easy. So you have. Um, the back end of the systems, um, it's communicating about, uh, in between we have the OCCP broker um, that is doing then uh, the calculation, the everything else, and um, on the other side, somehow the systems like MCTT, databases, um, consumer apps, the cloud access, and so on. So these are all 
points where you can interact anyhow with the system. But um, it, is, it could also be easier, so we will see. Mm -hmm. The OCPB um, protocol that are in use are, uh, so there are different standards that they have, so the minimum requirement currently is still the version 1.6, so it's a SOAP application or JSON, um, so smart charging supported and so on, and um, yeah, some other things that I can do. So I don't want to um, bother with the standards, so we quickly go to the Interesting thing, so they have then uh, implemented a new standard and um, 2021, they have then implemented the OCPD uh, protocol version 2.01 and I highlighted the interesting part of the web, so they added security 21. <laughs> and uh, they added smart charging functionality, so um, bidirectional charging uh, and so on, and also support for the ISO 15.11.8. So before it was not implemented, um, yeah. But one of the interesting facts is that um, the OTPP protocol 1.6 is still the minimum requirement when you uh, bring in place new charging points or charging stations. Um, yeah. The problem itself is still um, the backend communication is mostly unencrypted, if not uh, implemented. So even with the new version, um, of oh, March 21, uh, 2020, 21 I said a few minutes before, so it was one 2020 was, uh, was first implemented. Um, yeah, the old version is still the minimum requirement, so you can imagine how many things are out there with these old protocols, and once in place, it will never be changed because uh, never touch a running system, I think. So, and it costs money to change all those systems. Mm -hmm. When we look now a little bit more on how it is working, so on the left we have the electric grid. Um, could be your house um, um, or directly from the grid. Then you have the charging station inside um, with the AC or DC, um, some control parts inside, and then uh, anyhow you connect with a cable, your car to the charging point, and uh, some interaction is done, and uh, your car is charged, and that's it. Um, looks very easy. When we go a little bit deeper in the details, um, so we are going now a little bit in the electrical design of uh, those things. So it's still a block diagram, it's very easy because uh, again the, um, we have the grid, the charging station in the middle, and uh, in this case it's an AC system. Um, you have then an AC-DC converter, depends on uh, if your car has a uh, DC converter inside or not. Um, so the charging station can switch over. And the interesting part is then, uh, it goes then directly in the communication with the battery management system and the battery pack in your car. So that's the interesting point and um, that was um, initially the focus uh, where I wanted to go inside because of what can I do um, when I'm manipulating a charging station? Do I have access to the battery management system in the car? So that was the start uh, of my research at that time. The DC part is looking quite the same. Uh, only a few uh, devices are added, um, but um, yeah, from the block diagram, it's just like the same. Um, but yeah. When you go, dig a little bit deeper inside, then uh, you already see a couple of more devices there. So um, you have a host controller, you have an MCU inside, um, you have um, real-time clock devices, AC DC uh, converter, um, the display unit, uh, some kind of tamper-proof display thing. You see your uh, MPEG um, or high square C bridges, tamper uh, settings, and so on, and um, all the other communication. So, if you want to have physical access to um, the motherboard of the system, you can already do so many things because there are so many attack uh, places that you can do. But sometimes it's very easy to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when it comes then uh, to the security model of the charging stations, uh, yeah, you can assume maybe it's the wrong scope that they have used. Um, yeah, first thing was uh, the housing is defined as secure. 
okay, there's an air cabinet, uh, there's a lock maybe, okay, everything inside is secure. Second part was then uh, the IoT or IIoT inside uh, is not secured because of the number one, the housing is secure. So it was already first mismatch, um, okay, they think that we don't need it because there is a good lock in front of it. Um, this, this is still uh, in thing, it's publicly known since 2017, uh, I think already years before. Um, they have secure uh, charging cards, but still using only the UID of the card. Doesn't matter if they use MyFire, Deathfire, or whatever. They're only using the UID of the card. And um, what you can do with that, uh, we will see in the in the details later. Um, number three, uh, number four is uh, yeah, it's still publicly known. There are plenty of talks about that, so um, I don't. Go in detail for, uh, with that. No encryption, yeah. We have heard that the backend encryption uh, is not there, is not switched on, so yeah. And sometimes you find them on showdown. It's even more uh, worse. And more and more and more. Okay. Just one demo, um, that was one that I found in the Netherlands. Uh, OCPP, charger station, blah blah, whatever. Um, so you find them online, uh, you just can connect to the TCP port there, and the interesting part is then um, the yellow one highlighted here, uh, just the last sentence down, uh, user service reset password token requested, um, so you can interact how, uh, anyhow with the password management of the charging station in this case uh, online. So I have not looked deeper inside because, um, yeah, it's could be a little, I think. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can find them online. So not so often, but sometimes um, there are a couple of them. I mentioned uh, a couple of minutes before the physical security. So here we have a uh, charging station uh, where I was able to work on um, three charging point. I um, so it's an, um, just type two plug and then uh, DCC. Uh, um, DC charger, a charging point, and so on. And yeah, what I've done, um, I made my own tools to open the charging station because it was a simple lock only. Um, if you can see here in the details, it's just only a snapper lock, um, so you have anyhow only a um, small piece of metal so can uh, go sideways, and then you can open it. So that was this kind of thing. Um, yeah, standard electrical cabinets. Yeah. Um, during one of my travels, uh, I always looking in for charging stations. So because um, I always want to look how they uh, look like and uh, what kind of systems they have and so on. So this one was then uh, I found in Munich. Um, the same cabinet uh, lock they use, but they have now a tamper-proof seal in front of it. So. If someone has opened it, uh, you haven't feel, uh, you can see someone has altered the system. Um, yeah. But on the other side, uh, uh, there were two locks. Uh, on the other side, the seal was already missing. So I don't know who was forgotten about that. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. So, yeah. The seals are uh, yeah, normally there to prove that, um, the, that you can show that someone has maybe altered the system or not. Um, but yeah, I don't need to explain why and what. Um, it's already since decades um, public known. So this is here from uh, Black Hat in 2011. Um, they just need a solder can um, in a razor blade. And you make your own shimming device. Then you can um, open the, the seal, do whatever you want to do with the charging station, and then can reseal the charging station, and nobody will see that you have done something with that. So, yeah. Also, the um, protection mechanism was already achieved uh, wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, last two weeks ago, I was in Switzerland. Uh, was walking to the venue uh, where I had to go, and uh, in front of the hotel there was also a charging station. So. By walking there, so okay, just take some pictures and then so, oh my god. So this was the 
charging station directly in front of it, uh, so it has two type two plugs, and you can pay with a uh, charging card or with your credit card. So this one is very nice because um, it has an high secure lock in front of it. So the only thing that you need is a um, standard electrical tool. Um, you can buy them online. Um, I have always someone uh, something with me, um, and yeah. Or you can use a fly for that. Um, you just open it. It's very easy. So this one is in different uh, different sediment. So or you buy them still on um, Amazon. Twenty four euros. We have done everything else. You can also play with uh, with trains uh, and open the cabinets and trains and so on. But this is sorry. <laughs> so everything is in one small star system inside. Um, and by the way, it's um, traditional manufacturer in Germany. Uh, oh, okay, it's a very good one. So now we have opened the uh, charging station, and we want to see how it is working, what is inside, and so on. Um, yeah, this is when you open it and it looks like, oh my god, this is so much electrical stuff, uh, where I have to find what. Um, okay. First thing that you see is there is an Ethernet switch inside, in this one. Um, so, okay, there is an Ethernet switch, there is one empty uh, socket. What can you connect there? Okay, I took my laptop and um, dig around a little bit and, yeah. So here you are, uh, I have already uh, one of my sniffing uh, hubs. So it's a passive uh, sniffing hub that is uh, mirroring one port out. Uh, it's USB powered. I have mostly uh, with me when I'm traveling and do some things with that. Uh, you never know where you need it for. Um, yeah, okay. Um, just a short explanation about how the charging station is um, built up. What's, what you see here. Um, you have the embedded system with a network connection. So the thing that you directly see is the network switch, and behind it there are two um, CPTB boards uh, with the uh, logic. On top of them is um, a little bit more. So behind the switch is the, um, the computer. So in this case, two um, embedded computer systems. On top of them is the electronic uh, for. Um, 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 for the electricity, that is controlling how the electricity is uh, controlled and so on. Then we have some relays for the power connection that switch on, switch off, because the small um, the small relays on the motherboard uh, are not suitable for that, so you need some really good one from the electrical world. Uh, and so on. Then uh, you have some smart meters, because anyhow you have to uh, Charge the customer uh, with the power, so therefore you need this money that is um, counting the money. Um, you have some RCD devices that is protecting the electricity, and uh, also some circuit protection pieces. So this is most of the stuff is standard electrical stuff, uh, except the, um, the control electronics on the left side. You also see the second picture here, there is a SIM card inside for remote maintenance, for remote monitoring, whatever, so, um, yeah. So you can also do something from remote with them. The charging card. Uh, just short details about them, they are still unsecure. Uh, my fair classic, or sometimes uh, even better. I already mentioned the UID is only used, um, they are easy to clone. Um, <coughs> Very easy with a flipper. Um, yeah. Just take a rental car, uh, electrical rental car. Sometimes they have the charging parts inside. You clone the part and then can use it. No, no, no. It's already criminal. No, no. I don't do things. Um, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, cloning the card is very easy. So uh, this is already some that I show more in detail later. So. Here I have uh, the RFID ID, so um, that I use on my uh, Chameleon Mini to clone. Uh, I checked it with my mobile phone. Uh, yeah, the ID is good, um, and I provided them to the charging station. It works. So we have seen it in the video uh, before. Um, yeah, some testing device. Um, this is just it looks like a charging table for your car. 
Uh, instead of the car, I have a small test box there with a normal um, AC socket, and I can. I, I sometimes I use it for my caravan when I'm uh, traveling. Um, it's quite usable for that, uh, but also for testing. So I can simulate the charging station that there is an uh, electrical car connected. But in in, in my demo, I had a vehicle icon. Uh, yeah. So as you can see here. Um, what else we have here? Um, when I started to open and uh, started to analyze uh, how the system is working, so the, connected my laptop. Uh, the first thing that you do with an map scan uh, find out uh, what you see there. You find a couple of different uh, open ports, and uh, one of the interesting things was already um, okay. When you send it a special crafted packet uh, to the open port uh, 8192, it makes a reboot. Um, it also works with um, the same charging stations connected over the uh, back end. So when you have access anyhow over the back end to other charging stations, just send a crafted packet and you can also reboot those. So yeah, everything was interconnected from these kind of models. So, um, uh, so from the NMAP scan I saw, yeah, it was there, then uh, I built my own package for that so that I can use it in a uh, PC and it was working quite good. Uh, we reported to the vendor and uh, they mentioned to fix it. Um, I, I'll tell you later how it ended with that. Um, okay. The nice thing was then the charging uh, display just so then you can see, so I had to reboot and uh, that's it. Um, just short side view, uh, there was also a uh, cabinet with a battery for the charging station because it was a complete uh, build up, so they had a solar roof on the parking lot, a big battery station uh, in the back end, uh, and the charging station that is powered from the battery and from the solar, and uh, the rest is hanging from the grid. So it wasn't some kind of a small test grid. Um, even there, the physical security of the battery, um, it was the same. It was a cabinet there. Um, also there, um, you had then directly access to some HMI uh, displays uh, where you can interact. Um, when you open the side of the thing, you find um, yeah, some electrical stuff and some, uh, yeah, I like these sticky notes <laughs> with IP addresses. So um, the part with the password I not shown here, but uh, yeah, and there's also a uh, CG modem or UMTS modem for remote uh, connection and so on. Um, even there, you can play later on with that. Um, Okay, what else I find in the charging station? So one of the next things that I uh, figured out was, um, yeah, there was a web server running. So the web server had an IP address, and there was a web server yeah, running on in, uh, port 8888, and um, you just can access it without authentication, and there were a list of log files. So this is one of the log files that you can find there, and, um, you yeah, a few names I have here, and the interesting part is then, um, yeah, this was on uh, the web page that it showed. Uh, it gave you a download page for all the log files. So this log files uh, for separate download or download all logs. Uh, what I I think I did it. Um, yeah, um, you can also access the private area where you normally should know uh, access that. Uh, uh, normally there should be password protection or whatever. So you can download everything from that system. So from that I get the information for my card uh, because um, another nice thing is here in this picture I have highlighted it uh, RFID whitelist. So if you don't have a card that is valid, uh, just add your own one. Uh, because you just, enter, you just click the button, enter the ID of the card and then uh, it is accepted for the station. Um, <coughs> Okay, um, this is the other machine, so um, yeah, you can download all the log files. 
And in one of the log files, there is a complete list of all the IDs that you ever accepted at these charging stations. So you just take one of the IDs outside and uh, you clone it on your Camellio Mini or on your Flipper, and then you have valid card for free charge. Okay, this uh, this was the the third vulnerability in this one, and um, there was also uh, some other so yeah, this already uh, explained. And um, the interesting thing is then, okay, you can also use this, um, these, all these logging systems to um, yeah, collect forensic artifacts. So the log files showing in detail uh, a couple of things like um, the RFID uh, number and um, uh, in decimal and in hexadecimal and some information like what kind of car was connected. So an interesting part is here, uh, it's in BMW i3. Uh, it has, uh, the rest of the battery power is 18.8 kilowatt hours. Um, it's still in there, um, so it was quite empty. But also there is an, um, like a vehicle identification number within. Uh, each electrical vehicle has an PAF ID. So it's in, uh, the electrical vehicle ID and it's also unique uh, given from the vendor. So you can see whenever someone is connected to a charging station, okay, this vehicle with this ID uh, was on this charging point and uh, charged this car. And maybe use it for tracking, uh, for forensic analysis, whatever, and um, yeah. So there are a couple of uh, other useful information that you can extract from that. Um, but yeah, when you have access to many of those stations, you can make um, um, moving protocols about maybe a target that you have uh, in that area. Yeah, uh, what else? I have no conclusion because <laughs> I cannot say there is any conclusion. Uh, yeah, it's broken by design, you can say. Um, there, there need to be many uh, Many uh, progress in the security in these stations because um, so many wrong decisions did, uh, were already in front, so they have to um, do it in afterwards. So, yeah, so that's the thing that uh, still has to be done. So, I was stopped with the research uh, because of um, other political uh, interactions. So, um, the thing what I wanted to do further was, um, um, yeah, the topic that I already said. Is it possible to modify a uh, charging station in that way that you have access to the battery, maybe to bring in car uh, that the battery will explode? That was one of the questions that I had, and um, during the research, I already found out okay, it is possible to reboot, so um, it could be used also for um, amplifying attacks for blackout scenarios. So as you saw. Um, 2.6 gigawatt, uh, it's not enough for a blackout, but uh, when you have a couple of more charging stations that you can control and switch off the energy at a certain point combined with a couple of other attacks that I uh, had in previous talks about solar power uh, generation uh, attacks. Um, so when you combine everything, then you can force already different things and different ways. So yeah. It's still ongoing and still uh, progress in there. Um, still, so many work to do. Um, yeah. Currently, I only can to say thank you for attending this talk. And uh, if there are questions, go ahead. Any questions? Uh, the question, if the authentication for the card is just the UID, is it viable to just go to a station and start brute forcing a UID until you get the collision to charge for free? Could also work. Thank you. So you, you can also think about, um, yeah, you take one card, uh, mostly the vendors uh, buying thousands of them. If you have one ID, you just um, randomize um, counting higher um, or lower and have then different cards that pay for you. So it's also a possible scenario that can use. 
you yeah. showed that there was a list of allowed UIDs in the in the in the charging point. Um, how do they usually get added? Like in nor like regular operation, how do how do how is the card added there? Uh, good question. I have no idea because uh, I had never access to the back end system. Okay. So in in this charging station, that was only on the web page, and you can edit it uh, yourself. Uh, Maybe the operator do it uh, the same way or, or centralize and, uh, and then uh, synchronizing the, um, the files uh, between them. And so it's a point that is missing. Yeah. And is there any, do you know if there's any like mapping between cars and charging cards? Like if you, because you, you, um, you said you could like clone a card from a rental car and use it on another car. Uh, would like most, anyone most notice? Not. Mostly only um, it's a mapping between um, who has uh, bought this card uh, and who is paying for that and the card number for that. Okay. Thanks. So the user information mostly not, but um, maybe a change. Um, thank you for the talk. Um, one curious question. Um, in all the EV stations which you opened, did you see ever like a temper switch, like some alarm or something which would go off if you try to open it? Uh, not yet. It should be or could be, but uh, not seen it yet. Thank you. So it's easy to implement, yeah. It's just like a switch. But on the other side, when you know where the switch is, it's easy to uh, bypass them also. Yeah, another curious question. Did you actually have permission to do open the stations? Yes. And from <laughs> where? Like, who gave you permission? So in this case, it was a um, closed environment where we can test it and um, we were allowed to do uh, this uh, charging station. And all the other things that you have seen, uh, i never done criminal things with that. Uh, yeah. You're looking on things and then you see already what, what could go. Okay, any more questions? For example, the Swiss one I didn't open. Uh, Who would do? Uh, <laughs> some more questions? Uh, what was the waffle maker used and can you recommend it? <laughs> <laughs> Not that stuff that I had there. Make your own uh, waffle pipe, it's better. So these industrial things taste bad. bad. <laughs> um, since the communication is not encrypted, right? Are these stations connected to each other? Could you ping something from one? Uh, oh, you didn't in, try. Uh, yeah. You could. In, in, uh, in our test case, yeah. yes, uh, they were connected. So I, I could um, reboot the charging station on another facility uh -huh. 200 kilometers away. Okay. So. Um, you showed in the beginning the picture, uh, there was a um, network, uh, kind of network router, and above there was a board uh, with CPU. Um, with yeah, I think this one, control electronic. Uh, were yeah. there any debugging interfaces like, I don't know, JTAG, SVD, or some admin interfaces on COM ports? Also on there, but uh, don't need it. So yeah, okay. <laughs> every, everything was accessible over uh, the network cable um, because of there was no encryption, no user request. Uh, you had access to the FTP server uh, at the age. Um, so yeah, you know, but still, if they encrypted on the software <laughs> level, then they're still they were their hardware backdoors, yeah, that, right? Yeah, then the next level, then uh, yeah, okay, you just using a JTAG or UART yeah. um, yeah. communication, and then. Okay. Thank you. But so far, I had not to go. How's the communication done when um, the card communicates uh, directly through the charging cable with the station? Is there any other kind of authentication or? Um, is it... On the AC side, there is nothing. So the car is just um, connect. Uh, you connect the car, and then uh, there is no uh, ID change and so on. 
um, for the electrical current, uh, it is done via a an resistor, and that's everything. On the DC side, uh, they uh, exchange the information uh, like the UID and so on. Okay. So, um, yeah, there's some going more information about that. But also, um, no, not really encryption on that. Since you work together with the company and get permission and already said this is broken by design, so have you gotten any feedback on their future I, plans? The part I was missing. Um, uh, the story that I wanted to tell. Um, yeah, we reported to the vendor, and um, yeah, the first um, the first email that we got back was um, why you uh, test our charging stations. So um, yeah, because we had access to that, and so on. So then we brought it, uh, reported everything to them, and then so okay, yeah, thank you. We uh, we take care about that. Um, so the the card stuff is yeah, it's just common. Um, uh, all the other things they accepted. And they uh, wanted to fix that uh, in further versions. Um, anyhow, the communication stopped for one and a half year. No communication as, uh, further. So, um, beginning of last year, I started to connect to, uh, back to them. So, uh, yeah, what's going on? Is it already fixed? We want to make uh, the CVE um, for that. Um, and we want to go public with the uh, vulnerabilities and so on. Um, and then it, it figured out that uh, one, uh, two months or three months after we reported the vulnerabilities to the vendor, they fired the developer, um, the security developer of the company, and that's why the communication stopped. And uh, after one and a half year, when I started to communicate again with them, so oh yeah, uh, no, um, it's quite easy. We set the devices end of life. We don't have to patch. So <laughs> that's the story how it ended. So there will no be patching for this kind of uh, charging station because they said, yeah, it's end of life, you have to buy a new one, uh, then it will be secure. So if it is so, uh, I don't know, um, I have to buy one. All right, any more questions? I think no. we're done. Thank you very cool. much. Thank you.